Welcome to another episode of Candid Moments. Uh, today, this is going to be an interesting one, I think. Um, I'd like to introduce the founder and the, the CEO of Angels of Hope Against Human Trafficking. Please help me welcome to the microphone, Christina Scapellini. Did I say that right? Scarpellini. Scarpellini. Oh, okay. You're close. Okay, Scarbellini. Hi, Christina. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Oh, of course, this is great. Me and you got connected through um, a networking group with Lorna McDonald, Women in Sudbury Women in Business networking event. And but I don't think we ever met in person. No, I don't believe we have. No, you're right. No, so this is fun. I like this. This is you know we can see each other. <laughs> I'm so fascinated. So I follow you online. And so you're the owner and the founder of Angels of Hope against you. You're even wearing the, uh, the shirt today and human yeah. trafficking. That's amazing. So, so I want to know what is Christina's story? So my story is nothing interesting. I don't feel anyways, but um, so oh, it's off. Um, I'm actually a recovering addict. I was um, addicted to opiates. And through my active addiction, um, I seen, this was prior to 2015 when um, human trafficking wasn't at the forefront yet of things. So I would be, um, like I said, I was in active addiction um, at trap houses is what they call them, but they're drug houses. And I will okay. never forget, I was in Sudbury at a drug house and I seen this girl, um, she was using substances and a man kept telling her, hurry up, hurry up because you are going back to work. And I could see that he had some sort of control over her, but I couldn't comprehend what this was all about and what this entailed. So, and I seen it a few different times with a few different girls. So um, after getting clean, I educated myself and I had never forgot about those girls that I had seen. So, you know, I was very fortunate um, in my recovery to have a very strong support system of family, friends, and uh, professionals. So I knew that when I um, decided to abstain from substances that I wanted to recreate that support system for those kinds of girls. Again, at that time, I didn't know what those kinds of girls were. Eventually, I figured out those girls were victims of human trafficking and sexual exploitation. <gasps> so... I decided to um, start my organization, Angels of Hope Against Human Trafficking, and I focused on the mental health and addiction component of things because that plays a huge factor um, in human trafficking and sexual exploitation. Um, I founded the organization in 2015, and just recently, um, we are now funded by the federal and provincial government um, to continue our uh, services to assist survivors of human trafficking and sexual exploitation, as well as do uh, youth compassion groups and human trafficking workshop for service providers. That is amazing. Congratulations. Uh my gosh, you are making such an impact on this community. And okay, so next question, well, uh, what kind of impact are you having and how do you know when speaking with these, these, these women and being part of this group? So as well as the women and the men, but so far it's been mostly, um, it's predominantly women and girls. Um, there are some men and boys, of course, um, but we also support um, the survivor's loved ones. So we didn't want to forget about them because they're just as impacted as the survivor themselves. Um, how I know I'm making an impact is when, you know, the girls, I see them become go from survivors to thrivers. And when I see thrivers, I mean, we have virtual survivor-led support groups and they're there facilitating the groups and talking about their experiences and sharing them with other survivors that might not be at the healing journey that they're at yet. Um, something that really warms my heart too is um, when survivors and their families want to support Angels of Hope, whether it be monetary. I had a survivor's mom make me an Angels of Hope bag, um, just something little, but it was so special to me. Um, because it was made with love from a survivor's loved one. Um, and I had seen her go from survivor to thriver. So just these little things that I notice, um, I notice that I make an impact and it, it really warms my heart. The littlest things really mean a lot to me. Oh, that is so special. I have goosebumps right now. Like, oh. <laughs> I hope everybody who will watch this has goosebumps too. That is, uh, so you are, you're changing your community 
one person at a time. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, that that's my goal is to assist survivors and their loved ones um, through their healing journey. So our mission is we walk hand in hand with survivors of human trafficking and sexual exploitation while guiding them along the road to recovery because the survivor is the expert in their healing journey. We're just there to hold their hand, walk with them through their healing journey and assist them in any way that we possibly can. And to provide support. Yeah, that's, that's all that yeah. you really need is just to sit next to them and listen. Sometimes it's just listening that can help somebody. Absolutely. But I also want to mention that I can't do this work alone. I have an amazing team behind okay. me and a community of supporting people that have really um, helped me through this journey that my own journey of, you know, navigating an organization. I mean, when I started, I had no clue what I was doing. I'll admit that um, I, I've learned a lot and it's been very healing for me as a person and I've grown as a person because of this organization and I am so grateful and thankful for all the people that I have met along my journey and our amazing team of board of directors and our staff and supporters it's just I couldn't do it without them I can't do this alone oh, that is so empowering all I hear is coming out of your mouth is woman power I just <laughs> love it <laughs> and I'm sure that you know, you can't, um, it takes a village, right? You can't do it alone. No, I can't. Absolutely. Not one person or one organization can do it alone. We need a right. team of people to work together to help the survivors. It's impossible for me to do this work on my own. Wow. How many, uh, so this is a business. Well, we're, we're a registered not-for-profit organization. Oh. So we're a charity. Um, and I'm the founder and the executive director. And my educational background is mental health and addiction counselor. So I do the addiction component of things. That is um, as, yeah, as well as oversee the organization. Um, we have a project coordinator, a public educator, and an Indigenous social worker that is part of our team, as well as an amazing board of directors and a community of supporters behind us. Oh my gosh, more people need to hear about this. That's why I'm having you on. And I didn't even know what it was about, but it sounds like... It is, this sounds very impactful. So were you, when did you uh, obtain your education in addictions? So after I abstained from um, substances, it took about three years of professional help to completely get me off of the substances and my substance of choice was opiates. Um, I decided to go back to school. And like I said, I wanted to recreate that support system that I had through my recovery for survivors of human trafficking. So I decided to go get um, my education in mental health and addiction, and then really focused on human trafficking and sexual exploitation after that. Wow. So when did, when did you obtain your education? I graduated in 2013. Oh, perfect. Okay. So this was, and then you, got, then you started this in 2015. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wow. That, uh, but it, I think that this makes you connect, like to be empathetic to people because you've been through it, right? right. Like addictions. I feel, that's what I feel like. I feel that I could bring um, my lived experience to the table and be able to help survivors um, through my lived experience as well as my education. And that's why, um, I, I really want to focus on the mental health addiction because I had my lived experience and everyone on our team, um, our staff has to have some sort of lived experience um, because to me, lived experience means so much. Um, like it can really bring a lot to the table when you have lived experience as well as the education, but the lived experience is extremely important to me when I hired all our staff. That is so fantastic. I feel like when, like I have a really good doctor and she listens, but I don't, she doesn't empathize with me. Like what's going on in this body, she hasn't lived. So how can, how can you treat somebody? This is just how I'm thinking. Like, I don't know how you can treat me when you don't know what it feels like to feel the pain I'm in. You know what I mean? And like, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, like I said, I'm not a survivor of human trafficking, but I do have the lived experience of mental health addiction. Um, that's why we have survivors that work with us um, that have 
uh, lived through human trafficking, sexual exploitation. So they can bring that component of things. I have my, um, you know, lived experience with mental health addiction. Um, you know, an another one of our um, staff members has um, lived experience. She was sexually assaulted. Um, our other um, staff member is an Indigenous social worker. She identifies as Indigenous and she grew up in the foster care system. Um, and a lot of our um, youth survivors, um, do come from the foster system. So there she can relate to them. So I wanted everybody to be very relatable um, as well as be empathetic and compassionate to um, our survivors as well as um, not be judgmental. That is a huge one for me. Um, like I am in no position to judge anyone. I feel that no one is in a position to judge anyone. Right. And as soon as a survivor feels that they're judged, they shut down right away. So I really wanted to make sure um, when I hired our team, that um, they had all of these different qualities and skills. Wow, I love that. This is so great. Tell me more. What are these, um, what are the workshops like? What are these support systems like? Like, so like just as an example. So we have our youth compassion group and that's funded by the provincial government. Um, our youth compassion groups entail, uh, we talk about problematic substance abuse, mental health, how that plays factor into human trafficking, the signs of human trafficking. We also touch on positive masculinity, what it's like to be a man, um, a respectful man, what's consent. And when we do these compassion groups, it's a discussion. It's not us standing up, speaking to the youth. It's a discussion we all have together. And I find the youth are a lot more receptive that way. Okay. Um, so that's been working out great. Our workshop for human trafficking service providers, um, we actually tailor the uh, workshop to the service providers needs and what they feel they want to learn and what they feel that they need to learn. So that's what we do with our workshops. And then our federal funding consists of um, addiction counseling. So I do the addiction counseling. Um, we have mental health trauma counseling. That's with our Indigenous social worker. And if the survivor chooses, um, they could have, um, they'll do um, cultural uh, healing and counseling with our Indigenous social worker. And then we have our project coordinator that oversees um, our project and keeps me in line and makes sure that I'm doing what I need to be doing. And it's great. And then I have our board of directors and we also offer guidance, support, education and counseling to survivors, loved ones, because when I created this program, I didn't want to leave survivors' loved ones out. And I noticed that there wasn't many services for them, but yet they're impacted just as much as the survivors. So we um, included them in our funding proposal to be able to work with them as well. And we have a lot of survivors' loved ones that have reached out to us, whether it be for um, they want to be educated on human trafficking or they suspect their child is being trafficked. What do I do? Or they simply just need counseling and support um, and guidance through this journey that they're navigating with their youth or their child. So it, it's been, it's been wonderful. Um, we are so grateful for the funding that has come in and we're trying our best to make the, um, to make this project great and impact a lot of survivors and their loved ones. That is incredible. So this is situated in Sudbury. Yeah, so it's situated in Sudbury, but due to COVID and the amazement of technology, we could um, assist survivors and their loved ones all over Ontario via virtual or um, by phone. And if they're survivors in the greater Sudbury area and if they choose, they can we can meet them in person, but it's up to them. They have the option to go to access services by phone, virtually or in person. That is beautiful. I love it. Is that like, I asked that, like if it was only tailored to this city because it's so nice to be able to reach people at a grander scale, right? Is that like, I'm almost thinking like, you should, like I'm not thinking like franchise or business, all kind of, maybe like if there were like other people you can mentor in like different communities, just to like reach more people, like, is that something that has crossed your mind? So we will actually, we've had people all across Ontario reach out to us. And of course, we're never going to turn someone away um, right. of our services. If they do have services in their area, we'll redirect them to that area of their services. But if not, we will definitely take them on as clients. Perfect. That is so great. How many people can you serve at one time, like at your center? 
So to give you an example, since we started in 2015, we've assisted and supported over 300 survivors and their loved ones. Since we started our project in April, we've supported um, and assisted survivors, 68 survivors and their loved ones. Oh, I love it. That is so fantastic. But like, you must feel so, um, what's the word? Tell me how you feel, like, like as far as how rewarding this work is for you. I feel very privileged that these survivors and their loved ones let me into their life because I know there's a lot of trauma and a lot of layers to peel back and they have major trust issues. So for them to say, I trust you, I'll work with you, um, is I, I'm honored. I'm truly honored. And I feel so privileged to be able to share these journeys with all these different survivors and their loved ones. Is that hard to like, because I know like when you're a professional and you have to like, put the hat on and just, this is what it, I know you you share your story. So you're coming from a very personal point of view. If you ever get emotional, do you allow it to happen or do you hold it back? You know what? I'm only human and I allow it. You know what? I've cried with clients. I've cried with their loved ones. Um, you know, it's, I know I'm supposed to turn it off at the end of the day, but that's impossible because I care too much. And you wouldn't be able to relate to your, like your counselor or whoever's like leading the session. I think that's so great because then they can relate to you. Because if you're touched and you do cry, that there's no shame in tears. Why do we think that tears are so shameful? Right? We're humans. Th that's exactly it. I'm human. And when I hear these stories, sometimes I'm going to cry with a survivor and I think that shows them that I'm empathetic and I truly do care. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, like if you were to go to your doctor, okay, well, the doctors, they're by the book and they don't really empathize with their patient. I don't know if there's any doctors out there, you can tell me I'm wrong. Like I know they feel something, but they're very by the book but me I'm a feeler so I need to like connect with someone and I love that you do that with your clients and their family well, on my Facebook it says and this is a quote from Princess Diana I lead from the heart not the head oh I love it why can't we all do that like I know the world would be like so boring if we were all the same but no I'm not saying we'd be all the same but if we all led by the heart and less with the ego the world would be such a better place. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I've been criticized for my unconventional ways. Um, but again, like I said, I truly believe that, you know, leading from the heart instead of the head is so much more impactful to the survivor and their loved ones. So you know what, if I'm going to be that outsider that leads from the heart, not the head, so be it. But I see the difference and how receptive these survivors and their loved ones are, but I take that approach. That is amazing, Christina. <clears throat> That's what I like about you, and I just met you, is that you lead <laughs> with the heart. This is amazing. Ah, I love it. Yeah, you're leaving, like, you look young to me, but uh, like- <laughs> I'm you're, not that young. No, but you're creating quite the legacy for yourself and for your community. Have you ever looked at it like that? No. That's what no, because that's what I see. No, I, I just, you know, they help me too. The survivors help me in my personal life and my healing journey too. Um, so we both get something out of the deal kind of thing. Um, it's not just the survivor, but it's me too healing as a person and growing as a person and learning from their experiences. So I'm so thankful to have these survivors and these supporters and all these wonderful people that I have met along this Angels of Hope journey that I've started. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is so great. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just at a loss for words, but I think that these people have been touched, moved, and inspired by your journey and your compassion and the compassion of your, your team. That's what it's all about. Like what in our community, like we're, we're friendly and we say hi to our neighbors, you know what I mean? For the most part. But if you go to like big cities where people don't make eye contact, 
I can't relate to that. I'm going to stay in my nice little town because we empathize and we're, I forgot where I was going with that. Was it empathy? <laughs> and compassion. Empathy yes. and compassion. And it makes a world of difference. Right. And that's making a difference in our community by just lending. This is what my show is all about, man. Candid moments, like helping empower people. Oh, this is perfect. I mean, like I couldn't have chosen a better way. You know, I feel that people can criticize me and say whatever they want about me, but what they cannot say is that I'm not passionate about my work and I'm not compassionate. Um, like I said, you know, they can say I have unconventional ways of thinking. I do things differently. Um, but you can't take away the fact that I am so passionate about my work and I just love it. I couldn't imagine criticizing you. Oh, I, <laughs> no, I, uh, I love that you're so passionate about this. Why, why would people like criticize you? You're making a difference. You're making an impact. You know, one thing that I wasn't prepared for when I started the organization was um, the, and I don't know how to word this, um, the lateral bullying that goes on within professionals and the ego-driven professionals that are there for the wrong reasons. Um, and, and I've encountered a few and, and it, it's been interesting, very, very interesting because I came into this thinking that everybody had the same heart as me. Everybody had the same mindset as me and we're all here to help. But that's not realistic. Um, Ouch, there are, truth bomb. <laughs> yeah, there, there are some professionals all over Ontario that are very ego driven. Um, and I feel that aren't in this for the right reasons. But again, that's just my personal views and my personal experiences that I've had along this journey. But you know what? I've grown from these people um, and I've learned what I don't want to be and to always stay humble is what I've learned through these people. So I'm going to take it, those negative experiences and I'm going to take them and turn them into something positive for me. As much as, you know, I've been criticized for the work that I've done. Um, like I said, you can't take away the fact that I'm passionate about my job, that I'm a compassionate person and that I care. Call me whatever you want, but you can't take those things away from me. No kidding. Oh, oh, I love it. You, oh, I forgot what my next question was. Um, I don't know. It happens. I was just so like enthralled in what you were telling me. Oh, ego. Those, do you find that? So those difficult people, those, those energy suckers, right? They're energy vampires. Do you, have you come to a place that you realize that those are actually our greatest teachers? You know what? At first I didn't, I was really discouraged. Um, you know, like I said, I've been told that I have unconventional ways of thinking that what I'm doing is wrong. Um, I, I've heard it all through it, okay. through the journey. Um, but I don't know. It's, I've learned a lot at first. I didn't, I didn't want to accept it, but then eventually as time went on and I grew as a person, I opened up and said, you know what, I'm going to take these this criticism and turn it into constructive criticism nice. um, and learn from those people. And like I said, always stay humble. No matter how much success Angels of Hope achieves, I will always stay humble. And I always want to stay grassroots. There's just something about grassroots that it, it's just, there's that loving compassion. Um, I never want to lose that. And I, I made that promise to myself that no matter how much we grew, we will always be grassroots and we will always stay humble. Oh, I love it. So what's, what's your grassroots? Are you from here? I'm from Sudbury. Yeah. Uh, born and raised. I still live in Sudbury. Um, I am not married. I have a boyfriend of 14 years and I have a beautiful black lab named Charlie Brown. Who's my baby. That's Aww. my dog. Um, yeah. You know what? I think that if I had children myself, I don't know if I'd be able to do this job because they would hit too close to home because you had children because I see a lot of youth that have been sexually exploited um even from their own families I've, I've seen moms and dads um sell their kids for drugs for drug money I've seen them to do it for their own self sexual gratification 
Um, and I, I just feel that if I had my own children, I don't know if I'd be able to do it. I think it would just be, too, it would hit too close to home. Oh my God. Oh, there's some sick people in this world. There is some sick individuals in this world. Yeah. Um, and it's really unfortunate. Wow. And you are helping the other side. Exactly. Like the, the survivors. That is right. so, so, so important. I love how humble you are and how much you make a difference in our community. That uh, you are so inspiring. Thank you so much. That, that really means a lot to me. Thank you, Candace. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Well, I, if it wasn't for Lorna, I wouldn't have connected with you online. I'm so glad we did. And like I said, I, I'm so thankful. And I was so honored and flattered when I got your message that you wanted to interview me. It's like, she wants to interview me? Like, really? Like, I'm that interesting? Yeah, you are. You, <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to like cry too much, but you like, you let it flow. And I love that. That's great. I'm so blessed that I was able to connect with you. And I'm so glad that we were able to have a candid moment today. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to interview me and let me say what I had to say. Yes, I think your story is so worth sharing. And I just hope that you continue sharing your story and sharing your light and love with, with those around you and making the world a better place by sharing your message and being you because you shine. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Christina Scarpelini. Scarbellini, everybody. Thank you so much, Christina. Have a beautiful day. You too, Candice. Thank you again. Thanks.